everyone and welcome to another episode of Witching Through Grad School. I believe this is number six. I can't believe it. We're at number six. Um, and this is about a candle spell that can help you overcome writer's block. Or at least that's how I use it. Um, and also, I apologize for not showing my face on this video. <laughs> But I am tired. I am exhausted. I'm in the middle of a writing marathon with my prospectus. Um, I need to have my prospectus in, at least the first draft of it, in by October 1st or 2nd. Uh, so that way my advisor can have time to read it, give me feedback, and then I'll have to do revisions, and then she'll approve of it, and blah 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 because I need to have it approved by the end of October. So hopefully that's something a little extra that I'll get to celebrate for Samhain, in addition to all the Halloween witchy beautiful wonderfulness <laughs> of October. I'll be ABD all but dissertation finally. So I'm in the middle of a writing marathon. I've been writing pages and pages and working for hours for several days, and I still have another five or six days to go. But I'm taking a little break right now to talk about this. Um, this is the first spell candle I did. And uh, just last night, I took advantage of the full moon in Aries and I set up my newest spell candle and it's on the research altar. You saw it during the intro to this video. And after my little ramblings here, I'll switch over um, and show you what I recorded last night as I was preparing that candle. So I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about the ingredients I used for uh, that candle, the newest candle, but also talk about my first trial with it, um, my thoughts, how I used it and how I feel like it helped me to get motivated and get my butt in the chair consistently to do work. And speaking of getting my butt in the chair consistently, let's start there. So the key to surviving the dissertation process is consistency. Um, it is definitely the quality of the amount of time that you put into work over quantity. Um, and this is something that I've mentioned time and time again, um, and it's something that's really emphasized in that book, Demystifying Dissertation Writing. I'll include a link to Amazon if you want to get that book. I highly recommend it. I mention it all the time. I know I sound like a broken record, but really, <laughs> if you're facing the big, giant, scary monster that is writing a dissertation, um, I cannot recommend that book enough. So, consistency just getting your butt in the chair at the office or in the coffee shop or at the library, wherever you prefer to work, the kitchen table. Um, you can get a dissertation done even if you just sit and work for an hour a day, right? As long as you're consistently working and you're productive during that hour. You might only write a paragraph, but a dissertation is written a paragraph at a time, a sentence at a time, a word at a time, right? So this candle, one of the things I wanted to focus on for this candle is consistency. And it's something that I also um, focused on as I was making the newest candle, which again, you're about to see that process um, here in a few minutes. So consistency. And I wanted to create a symbol that resonated with me. Um, I, I really like the cross, not the Christian cross, but the idea of a cross a crossroads, an intersection. I like that imagery and so I thought about kind of the different steps to writing and I drew this kind of cross image incorporating the different elements and what they kind of mean to me in relation to the writing process. Um, so here we have the fire element of inspiration and then as we move around clockwise we have air for evaluation, reasoning, planning. Across from inspiration is actual manifestation and the earth element. And then across from 
the air or reasoning, we have the water of uh, feeling, intuiting, or using the intuition and connecting. And then in these little intersections between these different elements, I kind of wrote the, uh, the different steps that go into writing. And so the intersection between water, the water of connecting and intuiting and feeling and inspiration, we have brainstorming. Just taking out a blank sheet of paper and just writing, 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 whatever comes to mind, just stream of consciousness, consciousness getting the ideas out there, right? That is a very important part to writing. That stream of consciousness or those notes might not make it word for word into the final project um, or final product, but it's important to start getting your ideas onto paper or onto that Word document on your computer. The intersection between the fire of inspiration and the air of planning and reasoning is outlining. So you do the brainstorming, now it's time to organize the brainstorming into outlining. And then between air and actual manifestation, earth, you have the writing process, turning that outline into a draft. And then between manifestation and the water of connection and intuition and feeling, you have the revision, uh, the revision process or re revising. Um, because sometimes you might not have the words to describe why a certain sentence or paragraph might feel a little weird, but you intuitively know that it needs revisioning, it needs rewording or adding or subtracting, right? Um, and so that's basically how I use this candle. And this main piece of paper here is actually the focus statement for, or a draft of the focus statement for my dissertation. The focus statement idea comes from that book, Demystifying Dissertation Writing, but it's basically a, um, just a paragraph long, like a short paragraph long statement where you summarize your main ideas for the dissertation. So you have your main objects of analysis, you have the main themes, you have the main theoretical works that inspired you, and you have your methodologies mentioned kind of thing. Uh, it's just a way to keep the overall goals and overarching themes of your, of your dissertation in mind as you go through writing the chapters, so that way everything is coherent and everything is tied together and kind of follows uh, a line of reasoning and a theme, right? So, yeah, that is how I kind of put together this first spell candle. Um, I just used Mod Podge to kind of glue it on here. I just used plain old Crayola markers to draw um, out my ideas. Uh, and I found that it worked really well. I have a little research altar. Um, if you don't have room for a little research altar to put in your workspace, in your private home or private office, um, maybe think about including this candle on your main altar or somewhere where you can see it daily. And what I did, since I do have that research altar right next to my workspace, is every time my butt was in the chair, this candle was lit, and then when I was done writing for the day, or working for the day, I blew the candle out. Um, so that way, the f I, I used or harnessed the energy being released of that fire of this candle and tried to focus that energy into producing, into writing, right? And I found that it, it really worked for me, so... For um, this new candle, these are the ingredients I used that you're about to see me use as I prepare it in my little ritual that I had that I recorded last night. So um, I like to burn and create my own incense when I'm doing these sorts of magical workings. I feel like it's a great way to put my energy into something as I grind things up in a mortar and pestle. So the first thing I put into the mortar, mortar and pestle was some frankincense and myrrh resin. And this is to help me um, remember that academic work and research 
Um, for me, at least, it's sacred work. It's work for my personal development. Um, my spirituality informs my research. And uh, ultimately, all the progress that I make in creating this dissertation will help to will help my development as a scholar right so this is to remind me of that so some frankincense and myrrh resin then i included some sage <clears throat> excuse me uh, the sage is just to um, help clear and protect myself from myself from my own insecurities and negative thought patterns and um, I find that sage is great for writer's block, like burning sage, and that can be in the form of white sage. Sorry, the AC just kicked back in. It's still hot in Georgia. We need the AC on, but i um, so sorry if that noise is annoying. But, um, yeah, I specifically, as I was putting the sage into the mortar and pestle to grind it up, um, I was focusing on... The energies of sage helping to clear away and cleanse myself from, from me being my own worst enemy, from me getting in my own way when it comes to making progress. Um, yeah, because I find my writer's block usually 9.999 times out of 10. <laughs> It's me getting in my own way in the form of perfectionism or insecurities about my writing or the validity of my research and that kind of stuff. So sage can help clear those thought patterns out of the way. I also used rosemary. Rosemary has long been associated with memory and the intellect and the mind, so obviously I had to include that. I included some lavender in my loose incense that I made, and lavender is to bring peace and tranquility um, to the writing process, because uh, writing a dissertation, since it is such a long-term project, it usually takes people anywhere between two and five years to get it done. <laughs> um, it's going to take me probably around three years if I include this prospectus writing process, right? It can be kind of chaotic, and so lavender is so peaceful um, and such a stabilizing herb. And lavender always reminds me of amethyst and the calming energies of amethyst. Um, I think lavender and amethyst are a great combination to go together, so I added that. And then lastly, in a separate bowl, because um, I didn't want to burn this, but you'll see me include in a separate little bowl this. This is ground up eggshells. And after I got done grinding these in the mortar and pestle, I took a little spoonful and added it to a separate bowl with some of this. And actually, I um, that is what I used to dress and bless the new candle, but also as an offering of thanks to the old candle. So this actually has some of that in there. And eggshells, uh, they have a protective quality. There's kind of a mothering idea behind eggshells, but for me, um, besides that kind of protective quality, there's uh, very much a gestational energy to it. I mean, literally the shell is meant to protect the fetus or the embryo of the chicken or whatever's inside as it develops and gets ready to hatch, right? And so this is uh, to help me uh, generate and protect and feed and allow to grow new ideas. Um, the ideas that are going to go into my research and into my dissertation. So ground up eggshells are really, really great for that. So I included that in a separate bowl with the incense, set that aside, and then burned the incense and went through the little ritual, which you will see here in a few minutes. And lastly, I uh, kind of blessed the candle, the new candle, Ooh, that fell out, sorry. <laughs> I blessed the candle with um, this anointing oil. It's just this general, all-purpose, magical anointing oil that I've made a while ago. And every time I make a spell candle or I want to anoint myself or some other magical tool, I use this. So 
uh, yeah, you'll see me use that uh, in my ritual that I recorded, which we are going to cut to right now. But before we do, real quickly, um, I'm super curious to see like what other people's ideas might be of how they use the very practical side of their witchery, like candle magic, um, or jar spells, or poppets, or anything like that, to uh, help them through writing and getting over things like writer's block or preparing a big project. I know I'm not the only one. Is anybody else out there witch their way through a PhD with something very hands-on like candle magic? I'm really, really curious. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's cut to the footage from last night where you'll see me prepare the sigil uh, that I prepared, which I'm going to keep private to myself as to what that sigil means, <laughs> but it is a very powerful sigil. I think it's going to, uh, I'm going to continue to use it as I work my way through this dissertation, so it will accompany me for a while, <laughs> for at least three or four years. Um, so that's why I kind of want to keep it to myself. I'm not afraid to share it, but I'm just not going to explain it. But I created a sigil, you'll see me create the sigil, prepare the incense, cleanse, bless, and dress the candle, and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's cut to that footage. Um, and comment below if you've done something similar to this. So. and cleansed everything. I sat in front of my altar, I got into a more ritualistic mindset, and I charged my sigil, which you can't really see, but I have it uh, penciled here um, on my focus statement for my dissertation, and I will retrace over it with some marker and color it in here in a second. But first, I'm going to make um, the incense offering that I, uh, I think will be appropriate for this working. Um, I usually do a three card tarot reading on every Monday on my research alt altar, <clears throat> because Monday for me is the beginning of the work week. It's a renewal of energies going into my research and my dissertation for the coming week. And I got a pretty intense tarot reading, and I also got this card from the Work Your Light Oracle. It's the initiation card. And it is, yeah, you can probably see it better that way. A gorgeous card. I mean, you have the storm building, but you have to go, you have to enter into the cave to come out the other side, right? And um, this kind of ties into something that I actually wanted to make a video about in more detail. Oh, probably maybe towards the end of October or into November is um, the idea that the dissertation process is like an initiation rite. It's a rite of passage. Um, and rites of passage or rites of initiation, they usually imply some sort of destruction or death of the former self so that a new self can be reborn, you know? You have to enter into the big scary cave. You have to enter into the scary darkness in order to re-emerge, reborn, renewed in the light, right? And um, 
that kind of metaphor or that image of uh, almost like a shamanic journey of this dissertation process has actually been really helpful and healing for me as I enter into the cave because I am right at the beginning of it all and if you think of writing a dissertation as a an initiation or a passage, a rite of passage, it's one hell of a long initiation because ooh, the dissertation writing process can usually, well, it usually does take uh, at least two or three years, if not more. <laughs> so I'm entering into a long hell of a cave. <laughs> um, so I'm carrying the, the energy of the initiation with me into this spell candle. And I also have my old spell candle, the first one that I made. I'm going to give it an offering of some of the incense before I dispose of it. Um, I have my Mod Podge here to glue on, along with a little brush thingy, to glue on my new sigil and research focus statement onto the new candle, which I just cleansed with some sage. So let's get into making this incense, burning some, blessing the new candle, making an offering to the old candle, getting this sigil ready, and slapping this bad boy together. All right, so cue the music and the sped up pace. 